I want to show you guys what we call debate prep. Uh, this is something that Mark Halperin, uh, in this case, we, we did it the other day with, with Governor Scott Walker. You guys remember we might have done it in Milwaukee. This time we did it with Walker before the debate and Jennifer Nasser after the debate. Uh, we broke down the highlights, the lowlights, why the needle didn't move, what's next, uh, in, in a little thing we call debate prep. And I want to show you some of that discussion now because I think it's insightful. We've got a few more. I think we had 12 in the 2015 cycle. We've only had two down now. The RNC has that other one scheduled uh, for Miami coming up. As I've said before, everything that I've been told is an NBC is going to be the schedule. But I, I don't think Univision did us any favors. And we talked about that on yesterday's show. But I want to hear you how we discuss some of these issues that I think are going to be important moving forward for both the candidates and the mechanics of it, meaning both the RNC and the network partners. So take a look. Good morning. I'm Mark Halpern with Sean Spicer, and we're joined uh, to talk about the post-debate reality with Jennifer Nasser, the former chair of the Massachusetts Republican Party, and who, like Sean and myself, are looking to get our two hours back. I can say, based on ample reporting, that this Zoom is already more interesting than last night's debate, and we've barely gotten underway. Um, I've got a bunch of thoughts, and I know you guys too. Uh, Jennifer, uh, conventional wisdom was the only winner was Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and TikTok. Uh, I'd love your just top line thoughts about who you thought it might have done well last night. All right. So number one, I'm going to start with this. It was a snooze. I mean, I was trying to get my daughters to watch it with me. And until I mean, I think it wasn't until Nikki Haley looked at Vivek and said, every time you speak, I'm dumber. Right. I mean, it's like those that was the line that finally I was like, oh. Wow, that was like a shot of energy because I think before that everyone was just sleepy and it wasn't exciting. And then all of a sudden everyone kind of kicked in to, oh, wait a second, we're we're debating each other. This is a presidential debate. It's live. Um, but you know, it really, I think it was very sleepy at the beginning. I don't know if it was the questions. Um, I don't know if everyone was nervous. I, you know, for me, I'm a Nikki Haley supporter. I think Nikki really did great. And I was listening to one of the um, talk show hosts later on in the night who said it should be, you know, a in the next debate should be between Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. That might be a little bit more interesting than what we saw last night. Maybe some new RNC requirements that unless your name is Nikki or Ron, you can't be in the debate. <laughs> um, Sean, uh, what's your top lines? And then I got, I want to talk about the RNC next because that's, I think, yeah. an underexplored topic. Yeah, well, I, well I, I'm glad I'm looking forward to talking about that because I thought it was an embarrassment that Univision was part of that debate. I mean, between Univision hosting it and Gavin Newsom in the, in the, in the spin room, I, I thought if you closed your eyes and no one told you who the candidates were, you would be convinced that was a Democratic candidate debate. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm looking forward to that. I thought it was the dynamics were interesting. I thought Vivek clearly, we talked about this on yesterday's call. He came out very humble talking about, you know, the 11th, Ronald Reagan's 11th commandment and the respect that he had for the other candidates. And I'm like, uh, did the other did Vivek go home? Because he was much more humble and contrite. Uh, he, he was for, a, he was for a bit, but then later he loaded the snot back in his nose. Yeah. yeah. But, but, uh, and, and again, I thought, to Jennifer's point, it started slow. Then people got their one-liners in. It was Donald Duck from Chris Christie, Nikki Haley's dumber comment, Pence's comment um, about, um, you, you know, Vivek just learning to vote after he got back from China, the TikTok question. But the problem is everyone got their one-liners in, and then it was sort of uh, a food fest, a food fight. I mean, everybody was yelling, the moderate. It just, to me, it was, it was rather embarrassing. And I think uh, I mean, I felt a little bad for Doug Bargum at a certain point, but I'm like, listen, dude, you're you're basically lucky to be here. So like pipe down. But I, I think until this thing gets down to four candidates, it's going to continue the way it is. Yeah. I mean, here's my bottom line. I thought the reality and this is why Donald Trump is so far ahead and is almost certainly going to be the nominee. Get down to one moderator. Mike Huckabee had a great suggestion. Everybody gets equal time, 10 minutes across the thing, and you work your time down every time you start to talk. All right, before, Jennifer, I want to ask you what you would tell the chairwoman of the RNC to do to fix this mess. But, Sean, name your moderator. You you pick. Who should to moderate the debate? Ben Shapiro, Glenn Beck. Uh, I mean, anybody that actually has a pulse on what voters, primary voters and caucus, Sean Spicer, I'll do it. I'm willing to do yeah. it. What so first of all, I agree with Sean, Univision shouldn't have been there. It was almost confusing. It was almost confusing. And I feel like they, you know, Dana and, um, you know, I think they kind of lost control 
with the partnership with Univision. And, and I also think everyone was really disrespectful, right? And I think that that's what I would say to, to Rana is, you know, if they're going to be disrespectful, the only one who actually abided by her time was Nikki. Um, you know, there was that cross fighting with, with Tim Scott, you know, and he kind of did something that was kind of gross and beneath him. And, you know, that was, that was a kind of yucky exchange. Um, but I think that there should be some sort of penalty, you know, I mean, Hey, listen, if you're not going to abide by the time you're going to have to pay the RNC, give the RNC $10,000 for every <laughs> second you go over that should actually shut everyone up. Right. Because money talks and their donors are not going to be happy when they're going over their time. And then they have to give the RNC money. I think that there has to be, and I think also the metrics need to change. I totally think that at this point, listen, you know, Mike Pence, nice guy. Chris Christie, I love Chris. He comes here a lot. You know, Burgum, he, yes, he could buy his way up the percentage poll. Tim Scott, you've seen your day. Whittle down the field because at the end of the day, yes, Donald Trump is the one with the largest percentage. If we keep going on this trajectory, no one can eat into his percentage. They're only eating into each other's percentage and we percentages. And Maybe we need to... Put it down. Jennifer, the thing is, I don't I, like I get I, I'm a fan of winning the field. But when you look at where these guys are percentage wise, if you're Tim Scott or Mike Pence, I, and I, I appreciate your your transparency on where you are on Nikki. But at the end of the day, what is she one, two percent higher in a couple? Of, I mean, you're you're That's if the I, problem. Them, That's the problem. I would say, wait a second. Why? Why does she get it? Because she's, you know, at seven and I'm at six. There's not a huge disparity. I mean, all these guys, it's a massive car crash around eight, nine, ten percent. And you know, you look at the the when you factor in margin of error in the polls, they can argue, you know, I, I could theoretically be ahead of you. Um, and, and I get it. I want a, a smaller field to see these guys one on one a little bit more. But the reality is, is that the Everybody, even the second place person is at 13, 14 percent. This isn't like anyone's close to touching Trump right now. So what do we do though? I mean, so then, so then it's, it continues to be this cluster, right? Of all these people on the stage, all trying to get attention Two hour long debate because yeah. people don't come out. So if we are not telling the voters, here are your choices and you need to come out and vote, then we're just stuck with whoever it is at the end. Let, and let yeah, me, it might be Trump, but that's not democracy. I want democracy to work. One, one quick point. The, the goal of the debates, and you just articulated this, is to inform voters to make a decision. We've now had two debates. These guys have done a ton of television and advertising. At some point, part of the conclusion might be that they have made up their mind, right? Yeah. Trump's numbers aren't moving. And these guys are all car crashed around a dive. I mean, at some point, we can argue that, that, that it should happen. But voters on the Republican side in Iowa, New Hampshire, this is what they do. They pay particular attention to this. They, they kick the tires of the candidates. I was out at the Iowa State Fair. These guys are unbelievably engaged. And so at some point, maybe they have sent their message that they have yeah. looked at the candidates and they made their decision. 